Hey guys, it's Saga from TechWorks, and I have finally got the iPhone 10. I had to travel from Pune to Mumbai just to pick it up and then back again. Flipkart was not delivering it in Pune, so I had to get it delivered at my friend's place in Mumbai. Now this box was included with the phone, so let's open this one first and see what's inside. There is a scroll with a message congratulating you for the new phone and thanking you for choosing Flipkart. Then in this small box, they have included these coasters with app icons on them. It's nice, but looking at the size of the outer box, I thought they were kind enough to include a case for the phone, but no. Now the iPhone fits inside this black Flipkart box, which says you and I celebrate 10 years of iPhone. There is nothing else on the box, so let's open it up to get to the main attraction of this video. Just looking at the picture on the box makes you fall in love with that big display. This box is similar to the iPhone boxes that we have seen in the past. But the outline of the phone is actually in metallic color and shines as you move the box, which is a nice touch. This is a 64 GB Space Gray iPhone 10. Now let's open the main box and get to the phone. The vacuum seal on the box is not as tight this time. Maybe it's just my box. Anyways, a sleeve holding the quick start guide, warranty and regulatory information, SIM card removal tool, and the Apple stickers is sitting at the top. You should take some time going through this leaflet to get yourself familiarized with the new gestures which are needed to navigate through this new iPhone 10. We then have the beautiful iPhone 10 waiting to greet us. Not seeing a home button at the front of an iPhone feels a bit different. With this phone, Apple went from having some of the biggest bezels in the industry to now having one of the highest screen to body ratio. Let's keep it aside for now and get to the disappointing part of this unboxing this 5V 1A charging brick. In India, Apple included the 10W charger with the iPhone 6S and I was really happy about it. But the very next year, they went back to the 5W charger. I don't understand why would they go back. I am not asking for a wireless or a 29W charger, but at this price, we should at least get the 10 or 12W charger that comes with an iPad. Next are the wired earphones with lightning connector, the lightning to 3.5mm audio jack adapter and a lightning cable for charging and data transfer. Now let's keep these things aside, try to get the plastic off the phone and listen to one of the most satisfying sounds ever. This right here is the cleanest that this phone is ever going to look. The glass back is extremely reflective on this space grey iPhone. I went with this color because of the darker polish on the stainless steel rim. I don't like how the silver rim looks on the white colored phone. It feels a bit heavy for its size and I'm not too sure how I feel about its weight right now. One of the first things that you notice about the design is that camera bump at the back. It's huge and the orientation of the dual cameras is now vertical. They went with the vertical orientation because the face ID tech in the front notch needs a lot of space so there wasn't enough space left to place the dual cameras in the usual horizontal position like on the iPhone 7 and 8 Plus. The button on the right side is not twice as big as we had on the previous iPhones and they now call it the side button as it gets a few more features. On the left side is the silent switch and volume buttons below that. At the bottom is the lightning port and a speaker grill. And yes, the headphone jack does not make a comeback. Back of the phone is all glass as we have on the iPhone 8 Plus. We saw this first on the iPhone 4 and 4S and I'm so glad that the glass pack made its way to the latest iPhones. But that also means you have to be more careful while using it since it is more prone to damage and the cost of repairs is way too high. So I definitely suggest you to get a good case and screen protector for your phone. Now coming to this beautiful display at the front. It's a 5.8 inch AMOLED display which looks absolutely amazing. We have had AMOLED panels on Android devices for so many years and it is nice to see Apple finally embracing it. The iconic notch on the forehead is being seen by many as a bad design, but honestly, I am liking it. It adds a bit of personality to the phone and you get used to it in no time. This notch houses the earpiece speaker, front facing camera and the array of sensors which are useful for the new Face ID feature to work. So Face ID. The large display at the front did not leave any space for a home button or the touch ID sensor. And the tech to have the touch ID sensor below the display is not mainstream yet. So Apple decided to ditch touch ID completely. 
scanning your face for face id is a lot faster than scanning your finger for touch id and face id is also supposed to be more secure than touch id in the short time that i have had this phone i found face id to be very accurate but it is not nearly as convenient as touch id was i'm sure we will get used to face id but i doubt it will ever be as convenient as touch id since there is no home button there are a few new gestures that you need to get used to you can raise the phone to wake it up so it starts scanning your face you can even tap once on the screen to wake it or just press the side button once it is unlocked you have to swipe up from the bottom to get to the home screen just swipe up from the bottom of the display to go back to the home screen from within any app swipe up from the bottom and hold to get to the app switching menu you can also just swipe back and forth on the bottom bar to switch between the recent open apps to close the apps you need to hold them for a couple of seconds until the red batches appear and then swipe them off swiping down from the top middle or top left of the screen brings down the notifications panel and swiping down from the top right gets you to the control center you can even use the reachability feature by swiping down from halfway on the dock and then swipe down to get to the notifications panel or the control center this seems like you have to learn a lot of new gestures but it doesn't even take a full day to get used to it if you don't want to use these gestures there is a way to get a virtual home button on the iPhone 10 go to settings general accessibility assistive touch and turn it on this gives you a virtual button on the home screen you can move it around and even assign various actions to it i have mine set to go to the home button on a single tap open multitasking on double tap open control center on long press and go to the notifications panel on force touch this is the closest that you can get to a home button on this new iphone and since there is no physical home button there are no new ways to take a screenshot get to siri and turn off the phone to take a screenshot just press the side button and the volume up key together press the side button once to wake the phone press and hold the side button for a couple of moments to talk to siri and to power off the phone press and hold the side button together with any of the volume buttons for a couple of seconds now coming back to the display at 5.8 inches it is taller than the 5.5 inch display of the iphone 8 plus but it is not as wide so it doesn't get some of the display features that the plus size iphones do we will take a better look at this in the full review of this phone this phone packs in the same apple a11 bionic chip as the iphone 8 and 8 plus and 3 gb of ram its performance has been very smooth so far in my usage and the benchmark scores just blows the competition away the vertical camera module at the back houses dual 12 megapixel cameras one has a 28 mm lens with f1.8 aperture and the second one has a 56 mm lens with f2.4 aperture and now both these lenses have optical image stabilization wider aperture and os on the telephoto lens mean we can expect even better low light performance from it i have had this phone only for a day so did not get a chance to test out the camera and the battery life extensively so i can't really comment much on that right now i will try and use this camera as much as i can and have a dedicated camera review up on the channel in the next few days so make sure you are subscribed to the channel and have the notifications turned on so you don't miss that video i think this has been the longest unboxing and first impressions video that i have ever made so let me wrap up this video by just putting my thoughts in points once again i like how the phone looks and feels in my hand i am a fan of the glass back on all phones and i am glad apple brought it back to the latest iPhones cost of the repairs is very high so you should definitely use a case with it the display is bright and colorful in any lighting conditions the notch is not a big distraction for me and i actually like it face id is accurate but less convenient than touch id using gestures instead of the home button to navigate seems more futuristic and the camera hump is really big you also get any emojis on this phone but in this short time i did not get a lot of time to play with them and i will cover them in one of the future videos in a few days i will post its camera review and compare its camera with that of the iphone 8 plus if you have any other questions about this phone leave them in the comment section and i will try and answer them in the full review or maybe make a separate video just to answer the questions that you guys have that is it for this video guys please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to the channel for more quality tech videos like this you can also check out some of the other videos on this channel This has been Saga and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care.